Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. At the end of this week, September 14th, 2024, the new USS New Jersey nuclear attack submarine SSN 796 is going to be commissioned. We've been waiting for this for a half a decade since the name was announced, uh, and it's finally happening. This is only going to be the third New Jersey to ever be commissioned in the United States Navy, and it, of course it's the first one since this battleship was commissioned in 1943. So the first New Jersey in 80 years. There was only like a 35-year span between when the first New Jersey and this battleship were commissioned. It's been a much longer span for the submarine. Now obviously, Battleship New Jersey was sitting around in the reserve fleet and could be reactivated, and so the name couldn't be reauthorized until uh, she was completely stricken and it was unlikely that she would ever be used again. But uh, we're finally at that point. We're so excited, so all of this week, we're gonna post videos that uh, in some way relate to submarines. So welcome to Submarine Week on Battleship New Jersey. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about periscopes. And this is actually one of the things that uh, battleships and most submarines have in common. When somebody brings up periscopes, the first thing that you think about is a submarine, right? Like, submarines need periscopes to attack from underwater. Makes sense, right? Uh, submarines typically, like traditionally, a submarine will have two periscopes, an observation scope and an attack scope. The observation scope usually has a few more bells and whistles. It's a little bit bigger, uh, and it's easier to be seen by the enemy. Uh, it's both easier for you to observe with, and it's easier for them to observe. So when you're going into combat, you're going to use the attack scope. And the attack scope usually comes to a, a much finer head that, that it's much more difficult to see. Would you believe it if I told you that even though submarines are known for their periscopes, that uh, battleships tend to have about 10 times as many as submarines? Uh, we're, we're using them for the same reasons, essentially. On a submarine, you don't have any armor your protection is stealth. So by being underwater, you can't be hit by enemy guns, you're relatively safe. You can't be seen to be shot at. So you stick your periscope up through your armor, the water, uh, to see your targets. Likewise, in the battleship, we are uh, in turret number two, and the roof of this turret is something like seven and a half inches thick. The faceplate of the turret is like 17 inches thick. The walls are like nine and a half inches thick. I, I can't see out of this turret especially if I need to be under local control uh, to fire the guns. So, each turret has a pair of periscopes in it. Not just one, two. Um, and these are traditional up C down C periscopes, not like they go up and down, like they are oriented vertically. Each turret has four uh, horizontally mounted periscopes at near the front uh, on the sides of it for the trainers and pointers when they're under local control. So if you're counting horizontal structures as periscopes as well, uh, then that number keeps going up. And then range finders like this one right here are also similar to periscopes. They're using the same sort of uh, angled mirrors at the top and bottom to be able to detect something. It's just this one is sticking out two sides and you're looking through two separate periscopes, one with each eye, as opposed to this one where you're just putting one eye under the periscope. So a single gun turret could be argued to have uh, as many periscopes as three, four, or five fleet type submarines. In addition to the gun turrets, a lot of the fire control systems have periscopes. So the ship's armored conning tower has two periscopes uh, for the captain, the officer, or the deck to use from where the ship is being conned from. You can't really see much through the view slits in the conning tower. That's more just to let a little bit of ventilation into the space. Uh, if you want to see the outside world, you're going to use the periscopes. And likewise, if you're pointing at a target through the periscopes, much like on submarine periscopes, there's bearing markings up here and a little arrow. So if I'm standing here looking and I line up in my crosshairs, which these periscopes do have crosshairs, at my target, Somebody else can look at this and say that is bearing 350. Uh, and, and so now we know exactly where that object is right now. 
In addition to the lower level of the conning tower having that, the upper level of the conning tower has at least three periscopes sticking through for fire control purposes. And then again, if we're counting horizontally mounted periscopes, all of our range finders uh, for the secondary batteries and the five inch guns and the uh, directors uh, also have periscopes as well. So we're talking dozens and dozens of those at this point. But it's not just the gunnery department that gets to use these cool optics. The engineering department has them as well. Each boiler has a pair of periscopes. So there are 16 engineering periscopes too. Those periscopes go from the platform at the lower level of the boiler where the uh, fireside watch is, and they go up to the upper level of the boiler where the smoke is actually exiting it. And that allows the BTs to be able to look through that scope and see what color smoke they're making. If they are uh, got too much air in their fuel air mixture, if they're not burning it efficiently, then they're gonna have white smoke. If they've got too much fuel in their fuel air mixture, they're not burning efficiently, they're gonna make black smoke. It's easy for people to see you coming. But if you've got your fuel air mixture just right, your boilers are working on optimum efficiency, then your smoke is a nice clear haze. And so those periscopes should be able to uh, show you that I can't really see anything. Those periscopes have a light in the top so you can see if there's smoke coming in front of that light bulb. It's like a regular 40 watt light bulb. And uh, that, that's able to show you what the color is if you're doing your job right down there. So we've got 10 times, 20 times as many periscopes as your average submarine on the battleship at this point. But would you believe it if I told you that we have infinitely more periscopes than the new New Jersey? She doesn't have a single one. In place of periscopes, Virginia-class attack submarines have what are known as photonics masts. Uh, and that's a very fancy way of saying they put a camera on a stick. The problem with traditional periscopes is that they penetrate through basically the entire height of the submarine. And you have to be in the highest part of the submarine to use them. That's going to give you the most length of periscopes. You can have the deepest possible periscope depth. Obviously, the deeper you get, the more protected you can be. Now, if you don't need a traditional optics periscope like this one that creates a hole in the armor, you can get away with uh, something much safer. So Virginia-class submarines don't have traditional optics. They've got a camera on a stick, and so it's just fiber optics cables that are running through to the ship. And this now means that you don't have to have the conning tower up in the sail like you do on a traditional fleet-type submarine. The conning tower can be in the middle level of the submarine. Because submarines are round, the middle level is where you've got the most space. So now you can put more command and control functions in that space. It's not like the World War II fleet submarines that we've been on before, like Bakuna or uh, Cod, where the captain's in the conning tower, there's very little space on there, he's shouting down a hatch and other stuff is happening down below. The commander of the new New Jersey is going to have all of his uh, people around him. It's going to be much easier for him to exercise command and control. He doesn't have a big hole in the top of his boat for this periscope to come through. And you don't need somebody trained in how to use this. Like we've, we've got a, a wheel that's turning this way. We've got a wheel on the other side that does up and down. Uh, we've got something here that's uh, got clear polarized red and yellow lenses. Uh, there's some stuff going on here. If um, this starts to get foggy on the inside, we have to purge it with nitrogen gas uh, to remove that humidity that's causing the fog. All sorts of issues. If the mirrors crack or break, the, you need a new periscope. With the, the photonics mast camera system, not so. And you would not believe how they control these things. It, it's a regular Xbox controller, like with the, the corded kind. They don't use the battery kind. Come on. Uh, they use the corded kinds of Xbox controllers. Interestingly, the earlier Virginia-class submarines used the same kind of uh, flight stick as an F-16. Now, the Navy doesn't operate F-16s. So it is a common product that they can get off the shelf. Great, it's kind of cheaper, but you don't have to uh, train someone how to use this joystick. You do not have to train a modern submariner how to use an Xbox controller. Uh, they've all used one. Uh, when we got a tour of uh, New Jersey the other week, 
they were able to hand it to us and let us slew the camera around. And everybody they handed it to was able to, to use the joysticks, use the trigger to zoom in, uh, use the trigger to use the laser range finder. Uh, even the uh, little Xbox button, like on a video game, you push that and it gives you your controls. It brings right up on the screen what the controls are. So anybody can pick that up and use it and it gives you a display on a uh, TV screen. I imagine you can probably put that display anywhere on the boat that has a screen that's networked in and uh, show that to other people too. You can probably even record what you're seeing as opposed to one of these. Uh, yeah, I totally saw my torpedoes hit and sink that ship. No, I, here I've got the quote unquote gun sight footage of uh, what happened out there. So it gives them a lot of extra um, capabilities that the periscopes on the battleship and on traditional submarines don't have. Have you ever gotten to use a periscope before? If not, you should uh, come by Battleship New Jersey. We've got several of these that are uh, still working that are on the tour route that you can use. Have you ever used an Xbox controller before? I can't help you there. We don't have one on the battleship. Oh yeah, we do actually have one on the battleship, don't we? Well, we don't have it hooked up to an Xbox. Let us know in the comment section down below which museum ship periscopes you've gotten to look through. I've had the privilege of uh, looking through a couple on battleships and, and uh, several in the museum submarines out there. And I think uh, the cruiser Salem as well. It might be Little Rock. Yeah, there, you have a lot of opportunities. L let us know which ones you've managed to see. Oh. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below to support the museum. There's also a link in the description below to our gift shop where we sell some uh, submarine New Jersey gear, including hats and challenge coins. So check that out. We now ship internationally. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.